Good afternoon, friends. My name is Justin. Welcome to my channel. I've got a song here, and uh, this is from a subscriber named Dan. Dan says, Your channel has completely changed the way that I listen to and play music. Thank you for that. That's amazing. That is my favorite thing to hear from people, is just that I've expanded their view of, of music in some way or allowed them to hear things differently or play things differently or listen for things in, in a different way. That's amazing. So thank you for that. He says, I've been watching your subscriber song critiques, the uh, reaction videos, and they have been extremely helpful. I wrote some songs way back in the 80s and then was involved in an industrial accident that put me out of commission. And now I'm finally trying to get them recorded. I was wondering if you have the time if you could check out one of my songs and might give me some insight. So, we email back and forth, I tell him how it works, and he sends this song. He says he's in the midst of learning how to use um, DAWs, like a digital audio uh, workstation? <laughs> Workspace? I forget what the W actually stands for. Um, he says he's from the analog days and he's not a producer, so he would like my advice on the song before he does the final recording. And then he might have me play on it after that. So we shall see. Um, I got a Dropbox link here. This song is called I Didn't Know. And uh, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to mute my speakers, put on a pair of headphones, and I'm going to play a guitar um, and write a chart. So many things. So, this is my Danacaster telly. Um, I almost never play it. I thought I'd, I thought I'd get it out, just, you know, see how, see how it's doing. Been a long time. It's feeling neglected. I have a little bit of throwback overdrive boost on. I'm running into my Analog Outfitter Sarge, into my Morgan cab in the basement, um, in the garage. And, you know, that, that's just what I'm gonna play along with this song. So I'm gonna try to write a chart. Hopefully it's not super complicated. We shall see. Let's dig in. This song is called I Don't Know by Dan Rourke. minor sitting One back four. sipping wine it's been a while since i felt this fine i'm gonna stop right there uh let me just write what i have for the intro one uh it's like a sharp four diminished two minor and then there's a flat six to five move it sounds like he's in c hey I think, he was, I think he was playing two minor seven. So that's the intro, and it's also the first four bars of the verse. Let's get back in right at the verse. Sitting back, sipping wine. It's been a while since I felt this fine. Thinking about my days with you. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering what I should do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this sequence is awesome. It's all dominant seventh chords, and they're, it's just moving in fifths, okay? So the verse. Let's get a neck pickup. The back half of the verse. So 
so that's a one to seven um, dominant seven. And then it move it moves in fourths, like this is acting as the five chord of this chord. Well, that's acting as the five chord of the next chord, and that's acting as the five chord of this chord. And you finally circle all the way back around to where you get to the five chord of your home base of the song, which is C. Okay, I'm, I've stopped enough. Let's get back in right there. Come, say hello. At first it's yes, but then it's no. I just don't know what you'll say. You seem so mad when you drove away. That's really cool. What a chord odyssey. What a, an adventure to be taken on. So again, the verse is a... Uh... And then the chorus. It does that three times. And 
And then this becomes a 5-7 chord of two. Right? These, all these dominants are sort of cycling through. They're moving in fourths, and each one becomes the five chord of the next chord, is, is, how, is how I think of it, right? And there's some walks in between the different sections. The solo is super short. I don't know, the, song, the song's pretty long. You've, you've got two double verses, two long choruses. Um, there's a third verse, like the solo is the front. It's like four bars worth of the, the intro progression. And then the verse starts, and it's a half verse with another full chorus with tags. I don't know, I guess it's not that long. What is, what is uh, the time stamp on the old Dropbox, Dropbox link here? 412 is your total. Yeah, um, I guess, and you know, you talked about wanting to re-record this, so take this with a grain of salt. I guess for me, it's very, uh, what do I want to say? Like, it's very plotty. It's got this kind of shuffle, but it's, but there's just a lot of quarter note action happening. And then some of the like, um, pushes and hits in the verse. That's cool. It, it's all really cool stuff. Um, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like really classic 70s country with like a little bit of Neil Diamond and maybe some of the rootsier Elton John kind of stuff, you know? Um, it reminds me of that world a little bit. George, George Jones, you know? Maybe a little of that. Um, super cool. Uh, what would I do verse-wise? For me, you know, every time I have a double first verse, I my mind immediately goes, like, how do we make the second half of it feel more interesting and pull the listener in? There's got to be some sort of dynamic shift there, you know? And maybe... Maybe the first half of that verse is just really broken down. Maybe maybe the drums are just playing uh, something real light on the hats, if they're even in. I like the acoustic carrying that part of it, but when the back half of that hits, let's shift a gear, you know? And I want to say you did something like that. Let's go listen. I'm wondering what I should do. This is the end of the first half of the first verse. Should I call, say hello? At first it's yes. But then it's no I just don't know what you'll say Man, some of those parts are really awesome. Like the tremolo guitar, the clean stereo guitars. There's some real high chimey thing. I almost wonder if it's keys or if it is like a vibraphone. <laughs> it almost or bells, maybe. I'm not sure. You seem so mad when you drove away. I didn't know she was your best friend back in school. And I didn't know that she still lived next door to you. Yeah, the, the drum, the fills on the drums get, get kind of stiff feeling. I like the backbeat through the chorus, but when we get to bar three, that that's just that's a little heavy-handed from the whole band for me. But you know, I also work in a completely different world than like '70s classic, like glitter country. It's kind of it's like got that '70s big pop sheen to it but i don't know but it's still it's still kind of got that classic country vibe too um let's go to the solo that was really really nice i think you'd have been proud if you seen how good i tried to be
A lot of thumbed octaves, West Montgomery style. Yeah. I've got this weird way of thinking about um, diminished chords, diminished seventh chords. I just think of it as a dominant seven with a raised root, right? Instead of playing F7. That's probably not a weird way. I bet a lot of people think about it that way. But also, this is a D9 voicing with no root with a flat nine. That would be D9, right? This would be D7. It's crazy. So these diminished seventh chords, like they're, they're symmetric, right? Each one of them has multiple names. If you take a diminished seventh chord shape and you slide it three frets, you get the exact same chord, just in a different inversion. So this chord, F sharp diminished seventh, is D sharp diminished seventh, is C diminished seventh, which is A diminished seventh. And there's there's a few different way to, ways to play those, but I, I think of them as a like an altered dominant chord, really. So um, I do really, really dig it. The solo seems short. I feel like it could be twice as long. But then, you know, like I was saying about the first verse, when you're when the front half of it is down, that's nice. I like hearing things kick in to shift a gear in the back half. That holds interest because we've got a lot of bars before we get to our chorus, right? And then when we hit the chorus, everybody's in and sort of rocking, but it, it's a little... It's plotty to me. Um, I don't know. I, I would. I feel like I would defer to one of my drummer buddies to say, "What would you play there? What would you do to carry the vocal through the chorus and to really lift it?" You know. Well, the chorus is two lines. It's sixteen bars. The verse is uh, 24 bars. Each section of the verse is 12 bars long. And then we get to a 16 bar chorus, and then we have another 24 bar verse. And that to me, that's difficult, you know? You can, you can do the thing where you tighten back up for the front half of the second verse, and you go back to you know, the first half of the first verse, plus, like just a, just plus something else a little bit, and then gear back up in the back half of it. But still, it's another 24 bars before you get back to the chorus, you know? And the chorus is the whole hook of the song, so I feel like, I feel like when, I, when it takes forever to get to the first chorus, and it takes forever to get back to the second chorus, that's, a, that's a, an issue with the shape of the song. But I remember you saying that you wrote these in the 80s, and back then, people didn't have the attention span problems that they do now. <laughs> so maybe this is fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I like there. There's three choruses. You tag the last chorus. Real short outro with the vocal hook. Um, this is really, really well written. And really, it, it's clever with the chords. And I think it's a bit um, of the times, of the, of the 80s, you know, in country country music uh it, it feels a little bit like that but man it's light years beyond what we're doing today today is like two chords you know there's a joke in nashville it used to be three chords and the truth but then it turned into two chords and a loop <laughs> uh 
pretty funny. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else, what else I would, what else I would say. Everything seems to be in tune. I'm gonna listen from here on out and just see if I have any other things. I say hello. Well, likely you tell me where I can go. Won't you give me one more try? Oh, 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 oh. My bad. That's the back half of the verse. Let's let's start in that same spot. I say hello. Well, likely you tell me where I can go. Won't you give me one more try? It sounds like um, there's some strats happening too, or at least a, a telly with a middle pickup. I hear some of that quacky, clean strat sound in it, which is very cool. Uh, some of the some of the parts are just not quite laying like right in the pocket, you know. Some of the guitar lines that are doubled aren't necessarily doubled. The vocal stuff is really tight and really great. So. Yeah, I mean, if you re-record this, that'd be awesome. And I'll hang on to my chart just in case, you know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you would do if you would change anything of the form from what I'm saying. Um, let's, listen to, let's listen to verse 2, because if, if any of that's a repeat lyric, then I would say it's, it's superfluous, you know, not really needed. But let's hear it. I tried to be a few drinks. I lost my head. Yeah, I don't think Next thing anything. I knew, I woke up in bed. It wasn't you next to me. Just tell me I'm dreaming. This just can't be. You always said I should forgive and forget. I wonder if you've gotten over it yet. Sometimes we go astray But I still love you That's all I can say I didn't know she was Yeah, that's cool. And, you know, another way of getting around all those dominant chords is you're, you're kind of... Yeah, it's just like it, it's like the it, the tritone interval just descends in half steps through all of those changes as those those chords cycle as they move forward and forths, you know. Very cool. Um, yeah. I'd be happy to play on it if you need me to. And if you have any other questions or thoughts or want me to explain anything uh, that I was saying, then um, let me know. But yeah, I, I think the most crucial part of the song are the back halves of the verses. We've got to do something to really help us get to the chorus. It's just such a long time between choruses and such a long time before we get to the first chorus. And you know, the solo felt short, but maybe it's right. Maybe it's the right thing. I like how the, the electrics that you have happening in here all have like a very specific purpose and they're playing lines together. I think that's really cool. So, um, yeah, 
I will see you later. See you.